Shalom, children. Now that Jacob's long season of serving his uncle Laban is over at last, we will see this week what happens on his way back to his homeland. His large family, his many flocks and his great possessions are all coming with him. But Jacob is very fearful about running into a certain person on the way. Can you guess who it is? That's right, his brother Esau. It's been a while now since Jacob deceived his father and Esau became so angry that he actually wanted to kill Jacob. Do you remember what happened when Jacob was running away from Esau and stopped to rest for the night? That's right, he had an amazing dream about a ladder reaching all the way up to the heavens. In that dream, Yahweh promised to continue his covenant with him and spoke to him the same promises he had made to Jacob's grandfather, Abraham, and to his father Isaac. Now let's see what happens this time. As Yaakov's company slowly made its way home, he decided to stop and rest for the night by the crossing place of a wide stream called Yabok. On the other side lay the mountain country where Esau and his clan had made their home. And Jacob was thinking very hard about how he should approach his brother. He sent messengers on ahead of him to let Esau know that he was coming. The messengers came back and told Jacob that Esau was coming to meet him with 400 men. Jacob was even more afraid now. He took all of the animals and the people and divided them into two groups so that if they were attacked, one group could get away. When everyone had gone to the different camps, Jacob started praying to Yahweh he pleaded to Yahweh to keep him safe since he was doing what Yahweh had asked of him. He also made sure he thanked Yahweh for everything he had already done for him. Then he sent costly gifts and many fine animals from his flock, as well as servants, to speak words of peace and blessing to Esau. As Jacob settled by the brook for the night, Suddenly, out of nowhere, a mysterious man showed up. Without a word, this man began to wrestle with Jacob. Back and forth they went, struggling with each other the whole night long. Jacob recognized something heavenly about this man. Could he be Elohim in person? Certainly, he was at least a special messenger from Elohim. When the sun finally rose, the man stopped wrestling and simply touched Jacob's hip, causing it to pop out of joint. That must have hurt him very much. Even with his hip dislocated and surely causing him a lot of pain, Jacob clung tight and said he wouldn't let go of the man until he got a blessing from him. So the man asked, what is your name? As soon as he told the man his name, the man replied that Jacob would no longer be his name, but rather his new name would be Israel. Jacob, who was now named Israel, had a lot to think about as he limped along some distance behind his family and flocks and herds. Do you think he was still afraid of Esau? or of anyone else. Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming toward him. As Jacob got closer and closer to Esau, he bowed seven times. Esau saw Jacob and ran to meet him. He gave Jacob a kiss and a hug and they both cried because they had not seen each other in so long. Jacob explained to Esau all that had happened to him 
and how much Yahweh had blessed him whilst he was living with their uncle Laban. Esau said that he didn't want the gifts, but Jacob finally convinced him to take them. Then Esau went back towards his home, and Jacob and his family and animals walked a long way to a place called Sukkot. He put a house there for his family and himself and made booths or sukkahs for all the animals. This is just one of the places Jacob and his family stopped at on their journey. The next place they went to was Shechem, which is in Canaan. He bought a piece of land and placed his new tent there. Yahweh told Jacob that it was time for him to move again, but his household had to get themselves cleaned and prepared. They had to get rid of their idols and earrings. Yahweh spoke to Jacob and changed his name to Israel. Yahweh said, I am El Shaddai, and I want you to increase and become a nation. Today's story had a much happier ending than last time, didn't it? Well, we will see you next time for another exciting Torah portion. Shalom.